Hello, I'm Arjen, the common sense quantum physicist. My goal is to facilitate the understanding of the fundamentals of quantum physics. In the preceding sequences, we saw how a quantum particle could be represented by a spinning arrow-like object, which quantum physicists call a cat or a state vector. Spinning arrow-like objects are filtered through regular gratings, depending on the orientation and frequency of their spinning motion. So this helps to understand polarization and diffraction effects. We could also deduce easily a generalized form of the Schrodinger equation, which simply states that the result of an arrow subtraction between two subsequent states of the arrow is always perpendicular to the arrow itself and proportional to the infinitesimal change in angle. We saw that this evolution equation is valid for any spinning arrow-like object, whether a microscopic quantum particle or a macroscopic rod or a needle or a wheel spoke or a twirling baton or for this spinning Mikado stick. So this evolution equation characterizes the rate of change of the orientation of the arrow. The change of orientation of the arrow representing the quantum system is a very important concept in quantum mechanics. When the orientation of the arrow varies, the arrow acts. It has action. An arrow whose orientation does not change is inactive. It does not play in the game. This does not necessarily mean that it doesn't exist, but it simply does not act. Like this hanging Mikado stick, or like an immobile figurant in a movie scene awaiting for an actor to poke him. So in quantum mechanics we could see the measure of the action of an object to be the measure of the variation of the orientation of the arrow representing the object. It is therefore analogous to an angle. When this arrow rotates over an angle alpha, the action deployed by the arrow is alpha times a constant quantity. So we may express the action in units of an angle. For example, when the arrow has rotated one turn about a fixed axis, we may say that the deployed action during that turn was 2 pi in radians, or 360 degrees. For elementary particles represented by arrows like photons or electrons or quarks, the action is generally expressed in a unit called Planck's quantum of action, h. Little h is the measure of the action deployed by a quantum particle after a cycle in the meter kilogram second system. So when you hear about Planck's constant h, just think, think about an elementary arrow having rotated about 360 degrees. It's analogous. The physicist Max Planck first showed the importance of this quantum of action in the year 1900, because it showed up in a formula that characterized the thermal energy radiated by a body. So the concept action is at the origin of quantum mechanics. When a quantum particle acts, it is often more convenient to talk about the energy of a quantum particle, which is just also a quantity of action, but measured during a unitary time interval. For a unitary time interval of one second, the photons that are detected by our eyes have an energy a bit less than 10 to the 15 times h. So this just means that the arrow representing the photon accomplishes nearly a million of billions cycles during one second. The angle swept by the tip of the arrow 
is a measure of the action of the photon, of the energy of the photon. We could also measure the action of a particle when it travels over a space interval. We then just speak about the momentum of the particle. Measuring the momentum is another way to measure the action of an object. While the energy expresses the action of an arrow during a unitary time interval, the momentum expresses the action of an arrow during some space interval, while it travels over a space interval. So the momentum is the action of the arrow during one meter, or one unitary space interval. For example, the momentum of a photon emitted by an object is analogous to the angle swept by the tip of the arrow while the photon travels over a unitary space interval. If distance is expressed in meters, the photons that are detected by your eyes generally have a momentum about a million times h. So remember, the energy and momentum are just quantities of action. It is analogous to the measure of the angle swept by the tip of the rotating arrow if that arrow represents the quantum system or the quantum particle. It appears that there are various ways to express quantities of action in physics. Besides energy and momentum, ang angular momentum is also a quantity of action. It is a measure of the quantity of action deployed by a system of arrows if it is rotated ab uh, about some axis. Temperature is also a quantity of action. It is a measure of the average action exchanged between arrows composing the environment. And you surely know the formula E is mc squared, which learns us that mass is also a quantity of action, but measured over a tinier interval of time than for the energy. So you may think of all those familiar physical quantities as measures of angles swept by the arrow, or set of arrows representing the object. And they all relate to Planck's quantum of action. That quantum of action is anal analogous to the angle swept by an elementary particle during one cycle. So when you analyze a physical system, it helps to see it as a set of very tiny continuously spinning and interacting needles. That's the essence of quantum mechanics. The numerous mathematical formulas that characterize physical behavior just work out this idea. Feynman cast it in a famous sentence, things are made of littler things that jiggle. Next time we'll look again at this Mikado stick and at measurements you may perform on it.